I'm going to show you another chiastic structure that Paul uses. And again, I don't, uh, because I didn't start with these on Sunday mornings, I, I've not really talked about them on Sunday mornings. But for those of you that have been interested, uh, I thought you might enjoy seeing this one. When I look at chapter 6, 12 through 20, I think Paul is very intentional using a chiastic structure where he starts on one end and he moves toward a central point, then moves back out, reflecting each piece as he goes. So I want to show it to you. This is 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 20. And let me just kind of read it and talk you through it as we go. It starts with those quotes and responses. Again, a, a, a style of communication. So verse 12, I have the right to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. I have a right to do anything, but I won't be mastered by anything. Food for the stomach, stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. And then he says, the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. So he starts with those quotes and responses about, you know, what's good for me, I can do anything. But then he gets into the chiastic structure, I think. So let me just walk you through this. The second half of verse 13 through 14 is how the body is for the Lord. And notice he uses resurrection. So middle of verse 13. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead. He will raise us also. Pretty simple. Body's made for the Lord, the Lord for the body, and he uses the resurrection to prove it, that our body is not just a temporary throwaway piece. We talked about that on Sunday. Then in 15a, he introduces this idea that bodies are actually members of Christ. Verse 15, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? A strong point. And then he talks about, are you going to unite that member of Christ with a prostitute? That's 15b. Shall I then take the member of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. 16a, he emphasizes when you unite with a prostitute, you're one with her. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? So that's, that's the first half of this chiastic structure that Paul uses, just moving towards a point. And his point is, I think, in the second half of verse 16, which is, of course, a quote from the Old Testament, the two will become one flesh. That's a quote from Genesis 2, 24. The two will become one flesh. So first half, the body's for the Lord, the Lord for the body, emphasizing the resurrection. Your body is actually a member of Christ. Are you going to unite that member of Christ with a prostitute? Because when you unite with a prostitute, you actually become one with her. And he's insinuating that as a member of Christ becoming one with a prostitute, that's just unfathomable. And how do we, why would he say that? Because of an Old Testament quote that when two people have sex, there's a unity that happens that doesn't just go away. Now it's a chiastic structure. So we should expect that we're going to see these same ideas in reverse order. So let's take, let's take a look. In verse 17 now, instead of about uniting with a prostitute, it's about uniting with the Lord. Look at verse 17. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Here, unite with a prostitute, you're one with her. But if you're in Christ, you have been united with him spiritually. Up here, it talked about, are you going to unite with a prostitute? This is on the second half of the chiasm. Now he's going to say, verse 18, flee sexual immorality. Don't do this. Don't unite with a prostitute. Of course, prostitution was a big issue in Corinth, uh, more so than it is common in American Christianity, but it was the huge issue. Um, all other sins a person commits are outside of the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Then up here, we saw bodies are members of Christ. Now he's going to state it a little bit differently in 19. Do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Members of Christ, temple of the Spirit. And he began with the body is for the Lord, emphasizing the resurrection. Now he says, you are not your own, and he emphasizes the cross. Verse uh, 8, 19 at the end, you are not your own. You were bought at a price through the cross. Therefore, honor God with your body. I think verses 12 through 20, when he starts with those quotes and responses, then it's a chiastic structure reminding us of how serious sexuality is, uh, that you don't want to mess with that because of how meaningful it is and the reality that we have been united with Christ. 
Again, the purpose of this is uh, just to see how intentional Paul was and helps us as we read to read a little bit slower, realizing sometimes we see something that, man, this is a little bit confusing. When you see it like this, you recognize that Paul was attempting, and he did it well, um, a poetic way of talking about these truths in a way that grab, would grab people's attention. We don't think in chiasms today, so if we can choose to think chiastically, it can help us appreciate God's word even more. Thanks for taking a look.